You very well know that we have a law in the Philippines that says no president may stay in the presidency for more than eight consecutive years. That is a law. That is a law even ahead of the United States law. No president may stay for more than eight years. In 1972, Mr. Marcos was already seven years in office. He had one year to go. He was toying with the idea of fielding Imelda, but Imelda showed very poor in the polls. So what did Mr. Marcos do? Change the Constitution, sabi niya. So he called the Constitutional Convention in 1970. We were a few, a handful in the Senate who denounced this, and I told the Senate, we should not allow an open constitutional convention because it's very dangerous. Even America, I said, has never called the constitutional convention since 1776. They have amended their constitution piecemeal, but they never opened it. But we lost, and a constitutional convention was called. People were elected. And very quietly, Mr. Marcos started maneuvering to change our form of government from an American-type presidential system to a British-type parliamentary so that he can be elected as a deputy for Milocos, become prime minister, and then stay on forever. That was the plan. However, on January 2, 1972, most of you are already here in America. Some of you maybe were too young to remember. But on January 1972, almost nine years ago today, an old man, a retired ambassador from Leyte, his name is Eduardo Quintero, who is now in San Francisco, stood up on the floor of the Constitutional Convention and shocked the entire Filipino people with the expose that Malacanang has been giving envelopes to members of the Constitutional Convention, buying their votes so that they will vote for a parliamentary form of government to allow Mr. Marcos to extend his term beyond the eight years. The nation was shocked. Immediately, the NBI swooped down into the house of Quintero, and then they opened up an aparador, walang susi, and they said 500,000 pesos in cash were found in the aparador of Quintero. The implication was the opposition gave him 500,000 to make his expose. But if there were 500,000, bakit walang susi yon? Hindi naman 50 pesos lang yon. To cut a long story short, a delegate from Cebu, his name is Napoleon Ram, stood up on the convention floor and said, wag na tayo magtalo. Let us not discuss who received or who did not receive. I am now filing a resolution that will provide. If we approve this constitutional convention, this constitutional amendment, this new constitution, no incumbent president or his spouse may seek office. Out sa kulumbo si Mr. Marcos. E sa takot ng mga delegado, because they will be accused if they voted no, that they received the envelope, everybody voted yes, nalagot si Mr. Marcos. This Rama resolution was overwhelmingly passed. Mr. Marcos and Imelda Marcos are out of the running. So what will Mr. Marcos do? Hindi na pwede sa 1935 Constitution. Hindi na po pwede dito sa bagong Constitution. The only reason left, or the only excuse and the only option left for Mr. Marcos is to declare martial law. And so what happened? The students demonstrated in the streets. Sabi ng agent ni Marcos, Sige pa, sige pa, dagdagan pa nyo. More demonstrations in the street. Sige pa. Finally, bombings started in Manila. And did you know, my friends, the Manila police captured one of the bombers. And one of these bombers in Manila was identified as a sergeant of the firearms and explosive section of the Philippine Constabulary. The following day, this man was snatched from the Manila police and we never heard from him again. And then, on September 23, midnight, Mr. Marcos went on television and said, I, Ferdinand Marcos, acting as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, by virtue of the provision of the Constitution which states, in case of invasion, insurrection, rebellion, or imminent danger thereof, I may declare martial law or suspend the writ of habeas corpus. Therefore, I now declare martial law and shall administer this country alone. On that day, democracy died. And so Mr. Marcos arrested together with us in the Senate most of the leaders of the Constitutional Convention. All of those opposing him went to jail with us. And then when they went to jail with us, all the other members of the Convention were herded and they were given a Constitution made by Mr. Marcos and they were told to sign. And everybody signed, except those in jail with us. And once this new Constitution was signed by them, 
he released the delegates. And then, on January 17, 1973, Mr. Marcos went on television and said, Ladies and gentlemen and my countrymen, there is now a new constitution. But how can we have a new constitution? There was no plebiscite. You know that the law says, before you can have a new constitution, you must present it to the Filipino people, and the Filipino people must, in a secret ballot, write yes or no. What happened? Tinawag ni Mr. Marcos sa mga citizens' assembly. Tinawag niya mga barrio councils. And then in the middle of this meeting, tinanong, Kayo ba'y gutom na? Yes. Taas ang kamay. Taas. Lahat ang tabas. Approve ang konstitusyon. My friends, this is not fiction. Because in the now famous Habiliana case, Habiliana versus Executive Secretary, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Habiliana went to the Supreme Court and questioned the illegality of this Constitution. And what did the Supreme Court say? Out of ten justices, six out of ten said this Constitution was not validly ratified. According to the 1935 Constitution and according even to the new Constitution, it was not validly ratified. But then the Supreme Court added, but there is nothing to stop it. So, we had a Constitution. And so, my friends, we started with an American-type constitution. We moved to a British-type constitution. We had a parliamentary form of government without a parliament. Until 1978, we did not have a parliament. And yet, we were supposed to be a parliamentary form of government. And Mr. Marcos said, I declared martial law to save democracy. But by saving democracy, he killed it. And so, my friends, it was not until 1978 that the Batasan was convened. Now what do we hear? Mr. Marcos once again is up again to his new tricks. He said, I lifted martial law, but I think we should now elect a president by direct vote. But there is no such thing. Under the new constitution now, the president is purely ceremonial. Tiga bukas lang ng pinto, tagatanggap lamang ng credential ng ambassador. Purely ceremonial, elected by parliament. He's not elected by the people. The power of the government under a parliamentary system rests on the Prime Minister, and the Prime Minister must be elected by Parliament, and this Prime Minister may be removed from office if there is a vote of no confidence. That's the British type. So what did Mr. Marcos do in 1976? He amended the Constitution and said, I, Ferdinand Marcos, as Prime Minister, President, may dissolve Parliament, but Parliament cannot dissolve me. <laughs> and then he said, Parliament may legislate, but if I think they're not doing the job, I will also legislate. So now we have two parliaments, Mr. Marcos and Parliament. And it's costing us 300 million to have that two-top parliament. And what's the use? If Mr. Marcos is doing all the legislation, why give these 200 guys? So what do they do? They change the name of the street of the Bisoria. They, they change the, the name of a school. But when it comes to public decrees, like public order code 1737, only Mr. Marcos signs it. And so we have a situation where we have a man who can dissolve parliament, but parliament cannot dissolve him. And under the amendment number six of the 1973 constitution, Mr. Marcos is a president for life. And now, all of a sudden, two weeks ago, sabi niya, I have lifted martial law, but I now want to go to the Filipino people and I want their mandate of eight years. I will defend martial law. Anybody who opposes it can oppose me. I want to go to the people and get their mandate. But how can you get a mandate? There's no such thing in the Constitution. Sabuti Marcos, let us amend it. So now we are going to amend again the Constitution. And so we ask Mr. Marcos, but what form of government will we have? Ah, sabi niya, I want a president with powers. What happened to the parliamentary type British? Forget it. Let us now go to France. Let us have a French model. And so my friends, it is like the odyssey of Jules Verne, 80 days around the world. We started with America, we went to England, now we're going to France. Under the new proposal of Mr. Marcos, we will now have a president and a prime minister. But the prime minister will be appointed by the president. And this president now will be all-powerful. It will not be the American type, it will be the French type. 
And I suppose two years from now, when he gets tired of that, he will go to the Russian type, whatever that is. <laughs> and so he announced, I will take anybody, including Aquino. And so, I was not inclined to oblige him, but then he added, Pero sabi niya, hindi pwede siya Aquino eh, underage. <laughs> and so naturally, I went to the books. I said, how come I am underage? I thought I was already 48. Because the rule before, to become president of the Philippines in 1935, all you had to do is to be 40 years old. And so I looked at the book. Tama nga naman si Marcos. They've increased the age to 50. Kapos na naman ako ng dalawa. <laughs> of course, Mr. Marcos said, Pero kung talagang gusto niya, Kino, if he really wants to come home and to fight me, I will oblige him. I will also have the Constitution amended for him. <laughs>